All right, let's talk about price. So why should you spend $139.95 on this frame? The reason is what you get out of it, return on investment. This is a high-end frame, and you are getting an absolute ton of features and functionality from this thing. So I'm going to go through the feature list and explain each part one by one. And additionally, it's not just the product itself and what it can do. It's the people who are backing it. And that's true with any product, right? If you go and buy something from China and it comes to you two weeks later, that's it. You're on your own. That's what you got. And whatever mishaps happen, if it doesn't work right or whatever, for the most part, you're pretty much screwed for most overseas companies. That could be true with even companies based in the United States. You know, some of these people don't support their products very well. We're different. At Catalyst Machine Works, this is our absolute passion. We live and die for this stuff. Well, we don't die for this stuff, but we live for this stuff. And we just love it. And we, we, uh, we take it personally when something doesn't work right, right? If there's something that goes wrong with one of our products, we are going to do absolutely everything in our power to make it right. That's the way that we work. All right, one of the very exciting features about this frame that is different than a lot of the frames out there is the power distribution board. So let me set this guy off. This is the bare frame. I've taken out the screws that hold on the, uh, the PDB bay, and we'll just remove it. So that way you can see the, well, this is the bottom of the, the board. But, you know, we integrated uh, our power distribution board into this frame. And so that in and of itself is, is really special because when you are trying to uh, connect in your camera, your FPV uh, video transmitter, and your OSD, you know, all your ESCs, things like that. You want something that is centrally located and is really simple to use, something you basically just plug it all into. And that's how this, this board works, is you plug in your, uh, your video camera, you plug in your video transmitter, you wire in all your ESCs, and you even plug in your OSD. It's one central location. There are filters in line with all of those things. So you get clean power, you don't get video interference from voltage spikes and things of that nature. Um, so that is a really cool feature of this thing. You can see here are the, uh, these are some step downs. So these are for accessories. So for instance, this five volt step down you can use to go to your flight controller. If you have some LEDs, you have 12 volt step down here. These are also filtered as well. So that is a really neat feature of the Speed Addict 210-R. All right, I want to talk about some of the other features of this craft that are really cool. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is the camera mount, the HD camera mount. So if you remember, when you first saw drone racing, uh, you probably saw some YouTube video and you thought, oh my God, that what in the world is happening right now in front of me? I have to get into, I have to get into this. I got to get into drone racing. It's the coolest thing ever. And so that's why you're watching this video here. Um, we didn't forget about the HD camera, right? Even though this is a race specific craft, and if you want to go absolutely the fastest you can possibly go, you don't run with a heavy camera. But you're going to anyways because you want to show off how awesome you are. Say so I said awesome again. I'm sorry. Um, so we focused on making a really, really good HD camera mount. 
So that's what you're looking at here. This camera mount is made of a material called TPU. And TPU is a very durable material, um, it, but at the same time, it's allowed to flex. So what makes that important? Well, when you crash, right, you're impacting this, this mount, that's going to allow the mount to flex instead of, instead of uh, break, like brittle ABS would break, for instance, ABS plastic. Um, in addition, the, the, uh, the properties of this thing for anti-vibration are excellent. It tends to soak up vibration like a sponge. And so when we go out and we fly with this machine using this camera mount, the footage is absolutely stellar. There's no jello. It's just crystal clear, beautiful footage. And so the way that this thing works is you just put the camera in, slide it down. Gotta get this right now. There is a uh, strap that runs through here, right? Comes out the other side. You put this little piece around the lens, the strap comes around, you loop it around, you tie it down. That holds this camera in, but it's very easy to take out. So you can just take this strap off and, and take the, uh, the camera out of the, out of the mount. Now this particular mount you're looking at is for a uh, Chinese clone, it's called a, a Yi, something Yi. I can't ever pronounce the first, first word, so I call it a Yi camera. But we also have a mount just like this for a GoPro. And we are actually currently also uh, designing up one of these type mounts made of this TPU material, this awesome flexible material for a Mobius size camera. So you guys who like to run those very light, uh, long Mobius type cameras, we're going to have a mount for that as well. All right, next up on the list is the XT60 uh, connector pass-through. So that's it there, this little rubber grommet and the, and the mating uh, carbon fiber material on the top plate. Why is that important? Well, it's important because when you are running your battery up here, okay, and you've got these props spinning at 30 some odd thousand RPM, you wanna keep all of your electronics obviously away from the props. So that's what this does. You're not having to go and use zip ties and get all ghetto and look ridiculous. No, it's designed into the frame. It keeps it nice and, and, and tightly uh, up against the side of the fuselage. And so this connects in here. Right? I don't have the battery strapped down right now, so I'll just position it. But that's how it works. That's how it looks. Um, it's a very efficient way to do it. Keeps uh, the wiring down to a minimum, so it keeps the, the weight um, down. And uh, it's a really cool feature. Another really awesome thing about this machine is the front FPV camera cage. So some craft out on the market, the max angle that this, this camera can uh, be oriented at is 30 degrees, sometimes 35 degrees. In our machine, you can get this camera up to 45 degrees of tilt. And the reason that's important is <clears throat> As you get better and better at this, you start realizing that you're, you're holding a higher angle, which means you're, you're sustaining higher speeds. If you can't get your camera looking down track, you're, you're finding that you're constantly looking at the ground and you're always having to peek up sort of to see where you're going. You don't want to have to do that. So even for you guys that really haul some serious ass and are moving at, you know, at rates of speed where your angle, your inclination is 45 degrees, this camera mount can match that. It's very easy to adjust. There is two uh, little screws here. In actuality, I've oftentimes run without these screws because what we did is these two carbon fiber plates on the side, they compress this camera. There's enough uh, compression on this camera that it holds the thing in place uh, without using these screws. You know, so you can go either route. If you're out there testing 
and you're trying to figure out where, where's your optimum uh, location for the camera, you don't have to use these screws. But once you figure it out, go ahead and put them in there. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the components that you can use to build this thing up. So when we designed it, we didn't want it to be unpractical, right? So this is a race-specific craft designed to compete at the highest level of performance that is at the same time practical. We wanted uh, the user to be able to get standard components, you know, no micro this and tiny that and, you know, hard to find this or whatever. No, this thing accepts components that are found in most shops across the country and across the world and in our shop. Um, if you so choose to purchase from us. And so, you know, it's, it's easy to work on. You can take this top plate off and you have access to everything. Um, so it's just a practical machine that is also highly competitive. I want to talk about this antenna mount back here, okay? This antenna mount sets the RC antenna, antennae, at the optimum angle, right? The optimum angle is 90 degrees on this antenna mount. In addition, they're sitting back at, I believe this is 40 degrees backwards. That's important because when you are traveling uh, forward at your inclinated um, orientation, you want these antenna to be sitting up straight is the ideal orientation. The next thing is the material that it's made out of. Now this, this is uh, one of our prototypes. This is actually my prototype that I fly. Um, but this, this right here is, is ABS plastic, okay? Our production versions of this frame are going to be using TPU. So the same material that I talked to you about that the uh, the camera mount is made of this very durable, flexible material. So what that means is that when this thing crashes and it flips over and it smacks into this uh, this antenna mount, that TPU is not going to crack and break off. It is going to flex and give. And so it's very resilient to damage from crashes. So we also have a 180 millimeter version of the Speed Addict that is coming out immediately after the 210. Uh, this is the 180R, and this guy got the exact same design treatment as the 210, its bigger brother. Um, same philosophy, just a slightly smaller craft. So let me go ahead and show you where the center of gravity exists on this machine. Let's get this out of the way. So there's our center of gravity right here in between the two props sitting level with the thrust line or the line of thrust. Let's go to the front. All right, here we go. So the same scenario, just a smaller craft. And I would like to point out that this craft shares all of the same parts. Every single part of this thing is the same as the 210, except for this bottom frame plate right here, and this fuselage plate. But everything, is the, everything else is the same, so if you own both of these craft, a uh, majority of your spare parts, with the exception of these two, are gonna fit. So we feel that's a really neat feature. Get on the floor like I said before. Y'all remember that?